Good afternoon. I'm John George. I'm a member of the Brewarrina Historical Society and we are at the Brewarrina Cemetery uh, just having a, a look around and uh, doing a, a project. This, this is Jack Barker, John Hercules Barker. He enlisted in World War II with the Australian AOF and uh, he was uh, misplaced somewhere overseas and he joined the American Navy and served in the American Navy for the final two years of the war and came home uh, back with his wife and, and children, had, no, had another couple of kids and uh, he was very well known in the area. Here we have Frank Davidson. Uh, Frank uh, came from Victoria after the war. He served in the Navy. Uh, came to the war and met a local girl who's buried next to him here. And uh, they had four kids. Uh, some of their children are still in the area. Uh, he ran a, uh, a garage uh, where he sold Simca cars and uh, Chrysler's, that kind of thing. And uh, he was very well known in the area. He had a, a Lucent farm just on the outskirts of town. And uh, a couple of years before he uh, retired, he, they moved to uh, Grafton here in Lovers. Uh -huh. And uh, because of their family connections after they passed away, they, they were both brought home to, to Brewarra. Right, uh, we've got Alec Melville. Uh, Alec uh, served in World War II, um, went overseas, came back, uh, came to the war in the mid-50s, uh, was a uh, tractor driver and truck driver for uh, Clarks when they were earth, earth moving, tank sinking, and then later on he joined the war in the Shire and he worked on the Shire until his retirement and uh, lived uh, in the pensioners' flats in Bathurst Street until he passed away. But, uh, he was well known and uh, character of town. Here we have Hope. Uh, she was a lady that was raised in Penrith, uh, met a local boy, Roy Stewart, uh, got married, came to Warrena after the war. But she had served in ex services, not uh, overseas. Uh, She's, uh, she was a member of the uh, uh, local golf club for a long time and a very good golfer. She was also a member of the uh, Warrena Ladies Women's Auxiliary for several years. This is Albert Norton of Potty, as he's best known. He was uh, the, uh, the chap who kept, went to the Middle East uh, Came back, uh, served in New Guinea for a little while, uh, came came home, uh, and he worked around the streets uh, in Bree. Uh, he was often uh, uh, pulling a beer at the RSL or Middle Pub places like that. He also worked in the in the shearing sheds for a little while. Uh, he. Uh, he was married to Joy, uh, they didn't have any kids, but uh, he's still got a, a brother in the area, Paddy Norton, and uh, uh, they've got lots of nieces and nephews throughout the area. This is uh, John Walder Norton, better known as Jack, Basil, or Snobby. He was a, a, one of the Warren's characters. Uh, he went to New Guinea and served and came home, uh, but uh, he was a, a blacksmith and a welder uh, by trade. Uh, built uh, several uh, truck parades, horse floats, and that kind of thing in his business. And his business building still exists. It is the big shed that covers Roslyn O'Connor's Snack Shack in Burke Street. But uh, Snobby was a real character. 
Uh, here we have Belton Francis White, better known as Val or Wal. Uh, Val joined up in uh, World War II and he was in the Air Force. Uh, served overseas, came home, had his own plane for a small time. Um, he drew a uh, soldier settler's block out on the uh, Dury River out of Lamby and uh, raised his family from there. He, uh, he was very well known uh, in the area as being a, a top bloke. And uh, his, some of his children are still in the area. But some of his grandchildren are still here. And uh, that's the Andrews children. And uh, uh, his son John still lives and works in the area. But uh, his father had uh, Pat White's garage and the Ford Agency in Brewarrina for several years. Here we have John Mannix. Uh, John served in World War II. Uh, he was a, uh, a member of the AIF and uh, when he came home after the war uh, he married a, an English lass that uh, was nursing at the Brewarrina Hospital. Uh, she was Doris. Yeah, Doris is still living with us. She's uh, moved to Dubbo in her retirement, but uh, several of her children are still in the area. You've got uh, William and Tim and Michael, all still live and work in the Brewarrina area. Uh, there is also Patrick, uh, Diana, Mary Ann, and Sandra, who live elsewhere. But, uh, uh, he, uh, he had a property at uh, uh, Yapalee on the Walgut Road, which the family still run and control. Also, uh, he was a member of the Mannix family from Cato, uh, along with Mary Willoughby Ray's wife. Uh, and, but uh, she was the last one of the Mannix family to, to pass away. Here we have Jim Herms. Uh, Jim served in World War I and re-enlisted again to serve in World War II. Uh, he was a local Aboriginal chap, uh, very well known, had a, a few uh, relatives around like the, the Darcy's in the Balkans and uh, he uh, he's survived by a son Ron who comes back and forth to Bavarina every day and then and spends a few days with the Darcy family. But uh, he was very well known in the area. Now, here we have Alf Woodrow. Uh, Alf was a chap that uh, went to World War II, uh, came home, married a local girl from Gogolgan, Maisie Sullivan, and uh, they had uh, three kids and they adopted three other kids. Uh, out of the kindness of their hearts. They were terrific uh, so far as uh, uh, caring for people who needed caring for. And uh, Maisie had a, a terrific name for that. But uh, Alf worked on the Brewarrina Shire as a truck driver and tractor driver and things up until his retirement. But then they re retired to their property, Cuddy, at Gogolga. Here we have Martin Haggerty, my uncle. Uh, Mum's brother. Yeah, he uh, was in Western Australia when he signed up in, in Canning into the uh, AIF. But he, he served around the Australian coast in the small ships squadron, and uh, they worked all the way from uh, from about Sydney down to Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, up to, up to Broome, and came back and uh, did a stint in the Coral Sea and uh, and then when the war was over he went to the uh, Solomon Islands as a, a peacekeeper when they did the straightening up after the after the war was over. But he was a, a character, he was a big bloke, he was six foot four and twenty four stone and he was the life of the party out of the Colgo Sports Centre and the uh, 
he was off in the barman at the uh, at the functions that they had, whether it was cricket, tennis, sports meeting, or whatever. And he and Auntie Kate, who is beside him here, uh, they were life members of the Colgo Sports Club. Here we have Kenneth Black. Uh, Kenneth lived in uh, Young Street. Uh, he was married to uh, Coral Morris. Uh, they had three kids. Uh, uh, their daughter Robin is married and moved to uh, Urawa and the two sons now live in Naramara. So there is none of his family still in the area. But uh, when he was here before his passing, uh, he worked as a linesman on the uh, PMG. His wife and her family owned a, a shop which is at the rear of what is now uh, Holtz Services. Here we have Abby Kelly. Uh, Abby served in World War II and came back and uh, he was well known as a uh, rouseabout or a wool roller and peace picker in, in the shearing sheds up until his passing. But, uh, not married, no family. Here we have Doug Garner. Uh, Doug uh, served in the World War II and after the war was over when the soldiers settlers blocks of properties were being offered up, uh, Doug was lucky enough to draw one. It was uh, called Black Box and it's out on the uh, Colorado Cabora Road. Uh, it's near the ownership of, uh, of Kevin Keach. Uh, Doug and his wife raised five children and uh, they have all drifted away from the area now. But, uh, after uh, Doug's wife and, and the children had moved to, to the city, uh, he lived at, at the rocks and uh, he was a, a handyman by trade. Mm -hmm. He was a, a windmill expert and uh, he was very good so far as uh, farm machinery and that kind of gear. He used to go around to different places to help people get their, their plant and machinery working again. And um, he uh, did quite a bit of work at the, uh, at the middle hotel, uh, jacked it up and, and, uh, and that kind of gear, tried to uh, level the building up and put new structures and things underneath it. He worked, worked there for a long time. But, uh, Known as Dasher, he was a uh, he was a character of town as well. Here we have Bill Gallagher. Uh, Bill served in World War Two and came home and uh, lived and worked in the Barona area all of his life. He was uh, an outdoor staff on the uh, Barona Shire for several years. Uh, he had a reputation as being one of the best uh, street sweepers and. Uh, that he had uh, his wife Maggie, they used to live in Wilson Street and uh, they uh, adopted a few children mm -hmm. and, uh, and cared for some of the other uh, local Aboriginal children that were not being cared for. Uh, they would go to, to Bill and Maggie's and, and be well cared for and uh, they had a, a reputation as being a, a terrific people. Here we have Charlie Bailey. Uh, Charlie was a chap that was in Brewarna after the war. Uh, he, uh, he worked in the shearing sheds as a rouseabout bull roller, peace picker, with several of the uh, local uh, contractors. And uh, he uh, was also a member of the Maria RSL Club and a, a prominent figure there for quite a long time. Here we have John Dindle. He was a member of the uh, First Artillery Battalion, and uh, but uh, he came to Brewarna in later years. I didn't know him personally, but uh, he was a return man from World War II. Yeah, here we have uh, Hilary Godfrey Hurstlet, uh, better known as Cobber. Uh, Cobber served in World War II and came home. After the war, he and his brother Jack ran a butcher shop 
uh, in Bathurst Street, next door to the cafe, uh, for a few years, and uh, and he uh, he passed away uh, middle aged, not an old man, but uh, very well remembered by family and friends around town. Now here we have two members of the Crane family. We have Kitty, uh, Kathleen Crane, better known as Kitty. She was the uh, unmarried sister to uh, Norma Finlayson. Uh, Leslie Hall, Jeanette Lucas, and as well as having her brothers, uh, Bernard, Bill, Jack, and, and uh, her brother Jack is also has his ashes interred in here with Kit. Uh, Jack served in World War II and uh, came home, returned, returned to the family business of Crane's supermarket in the main street, where uh, the Friendly Grocers business is now. It used to be a, a bigger building than that. It took about three, uh, three building blocks in Crane's supermarket at the time. They, they had everything from uh, from groceries and hardware, uh, drapery, clothing, the whole works. You name it, you could get it at, at Crane's. It was a one-stop shop. Here we have Samuel John Thomas Willoughby. Uh, Sam was a brother to Dave Willoughby, the father of Richard, who owns uh, Food Works grocery store in, in Burke Street. And uh, there was a large family of Willoughby's. Uh, another brother, Ike, is uh, over in the Catholic section of the cemetery here. Yeah, you know, uh, Sam was married and had three uh, children. Uh, and he came home after the war. He uh, he caught some uh, disease while he was away, and only lasted about three years after after World War One was over. Um, it was sad, but uh, his wife and children moved away. But uh, Richard is still here. He's uh, he's continuing on in the in the family business. But uh, that that's about all for for Sam. But Richard's son Sam would have been named in honour of this old chap. Yeah. Uh, here we have members of the Stewart family. We have Curtis Stewart. He was the father of Roy, who still lives in, uh, in the aged person's home at the Bewarren Hospital. But uh, Curtis and his wife Evelyn's eldest son, Robert, or Bob, was killed in World War II in New Guinea, and he is remembered here on the Kokoda track. Here we have Brian English, a member of the English family. Uh, Brian served overseas in World War II. He returned to Bavarina and uh, he worked in Bavarina uh, sometimes in the shearing sheds, sometimes in the grocery stores. He uh, was working in one of the grocery stores in Burke, I think, at the time of his passing. But his, uh, his brother, Orb, was the English in the English and Hurstlet's garage, which they shared with Barney Hurstlet and his family. Uh, for several years. Here we have Jim Gilligan. Uh, Jim originally came from Tasmania. Uh, he and his wife moved up into the Warrenor area <laughs> after the war, uh, uh, mid 40s to late 40s. And uh, he is the father of Laurie Gilligan and Billy, uh, Pam McKenzie, uh, stroke. Uh, Bell House and uh, a couple of other daughters, Pat and, and Robin, and her brother Billy. But, uh, he died at a, at a young age, but he is remembered here. Some of his grandchildren still live in the Bavarina area. They have Lexi Redmond and uh, and her her children. But uh, that's about it. Here we have Isaac Willoughby. Uh, he is a brother of uh, Samuel John Thomas Willoughby that we did a little while ago. Uh, 
he came home after World War II, was married and had a wife and child, and uh, but uh, died at an early age. But uh, he uh, he received a military medal for his services in in Europe during World War II, and uh, he was wounded a, a few times. Here we have uh, a World War One soldier, Ernie Beatty, and his wife Catherine. Uh, Ernie Beatty served in First World War in the uh, French and uh, European section, and uh, he was uh, wounded a few times, taken to England for recovery, came back and fought again, and uh, he had a, a pretty rough time in World War One. But after World War I he came home and he had horse teams and bullock teams where they used to do carrying from, uh, from Brewarana to Yarrawin and down the, uh, down the marshes, Macquarie Marshes area and uh, did quite a lot of work, uh, timber cutting and that kind of thing. And uh, he, uh, he worked uh, in that general area for several years. Uh, after the war, he met uh, Kath Egan, a lady from up the road, and uh, he and his best mate, Charlie Wright, had a double wedding in uh, 1920 here in Brewarana, and uh, we're going to Charlie Wright's headstone now. Here we have Charlie Wright, Ernie Beatty's best mate. After the war, when they came home, uh, they had the double wedding. Uh, Charlie married the lady next door to him here, uh, May Fletcher. And uh, they had a large family of about 10 children. Uh, some of their grandchildren still reside here in Brevorin, have been Jeffrey Short and Wendy Finlayson and uh, a couple of others. Uh, but, uh, but Charlie Wright uh, got injured in uh, in battle in in France uh, four, three or four times I think it was and uh, he recovered and went back to service and uh, at the end of the war he was discharged on medical grounds but returned home a couple of months before his mates that were in the same battalion but uh, but he uh, he worked uh, with my father as one stage when they were building the country telephone lines in the area when telephones became available to the pastoral properties in the area. Uh, Charlie was one of the chaps who was helping dad and uh, after he uh, gave that away he went and worked as a linesman for the PMG uh, where he was uh, when he passed away in 1965. Here we have Ted Davies. Uh, Ted came to Warrena after World War II and uh, he lived and resided with the uh, Wright family in, in Bathurst Street at, at the residence where Larry Neal lives now. And uh, he was better known as Blanky. Uh, he uh, worked as a linesman on the PMG department for many years. Here we have Sydney Burroughs, old Sid. He's uh, well known to me because he used to come to our place Sundays, sometimes for smoke and sometimes for lunch. But uh, he was a real good friend of my father's, but he is also Keithy Coleman's grandfather. Uh, he had three daughters. There was Edna, Mrs. Coleman, Lorna, Mrs. O'Keefe, and Pat, Mrs. Harry West. Uh, they were a terrific family and uh, Mrs. Burroughs Agnes, his wife, is buried here beside him. But uh, old Sid was a, a top old bloke. This is William Wright, better known as Spy Guy. He, uh, he served in World War II, came back home and uh, worked with the PMG department for several years before retiring. He was married to Margaret Monaghan and uh, they didn't have any children, but he's got lots of nieces and nephews, including the, the Finlaysons and the Shortons and the, uh, the Sumrites uh, 
and um, users, Davidson's, that uh, gives Uncle Bill to all of those and Spike Eye to everybody else. Here we have Colin Cox. Colin uh, served in World War II. Um, when he came home and after he came home, uh, he worked on local properties at Turak and at uh, Tarcoon. He was there for several years before he retired into town and lived in Bathurst Street with his sister-in-law, uh, Leela, for a few years before his passing. But, uh, he's uh, got a couple of nieces that are still about. That, uh, they're both in Coolar, Anne Wright and Colleen Rich. He had no family of his own. Here we have Tom Sadler, a uh, soldier who served in World War One, uh, who returned to the war. I don't know a lot about him. But, uh, here we have William Fletcher, better known as Tuny. Tuny went away to World War One, came home and served. And uh, when he returned to Bavaria, he worked on a, lo a lot of the local stations. Uh, he, he worked uh, for the Lufthans and for the, the tailors down at Yabakuna several times. And uh, he was a, a real character and a, a jolly nice bloke. Here we have Gilbert Cole. Uh, Gilbert went away to World War I and came home and he was a odd job carpenter uh, that used to be working around the stations and things if you wanted a, a, a shed built or renovations done. Gilbert was the man to get and he'd go out and he'd, he'd work for Mickey Coleman at uh, Roscommon, he'd work for Billy Crowley at Conroy, he'd work for uh, several other people in the district and he was uh, very well known as a, a good uh, carpenter. Here we have Alf Edmonds. Alf served in World War I and uh, returned, came back to Bawarana. Uh, he worked around a bit and uh, in his later years he, he bought the uh, former boarding house of Mrs Frost in Burke Street, Bawarana, which is currently the home and residence of Matthew Andrews, where Matthew carries out his garage and business. Uh, Al Alf and his wife Annie uh, ran that boarding house for five or six years before he passed away. Here we have Fred Beaton. Freddie Beaton uh, was a character and a, a, uh, a real character. After the war when he came home he used to work for Mrs Wood as her gardener, handyman and that kind of thing and uh, he was a real yarn teller. Uh, during 1963 when we had our centenary, uh, Fred won the beard competition and it, it was a beauty and uh, he lived on that for a while. Uh, when he retired he lived at the uh, Hotel Bawarana where they, uh, they found he passed away there one morning and uh, but he, he was one of Bawarana's characters. Yeah, here we've got Clan McIntosh. Um, Clan was a cousin of my father's. Uh, both their mothers were Rouse girls, originated from Gadurga. And um, but Clan was born during World War One. He was called Clan Wallace McCorkado McIntosh after his uncle Wally Rouse who sailed on the McCorkadale in World War I on his way to Gallipoli. Now, Glenn uh, came to school in Mewarana and boarded with the George family after his mother passed away when he was about 10 years old. Um, he was raised here in Bree and he worked around Mewarana and Kuduga, Bolland area as a drover worked with the Stuart boys, Bill and, uh, and Sid, Roy's brothers, who also did a lot of work for the um, Luffman family. Uh, when he came back after World War II, he continued on with his droving plant and uh, worked uh, 
extensively around local properties in that quarter gear uh, for most of the uh, most of the Warren and Gadiga Bolland district, where he, where he basically was employed by the Lufnans uh, as a permanent station hand come driver. Here we have uh, Mr. Moore. Uh, he was a uh, First World War veteran. He was married to uh, Hilda New, Jeff New from Jeff New and Company's sister. And uh, he had four sons, or three sons, sorry. Uh, there was uh, Peter, uh, Barry, and Ronnie. what he did after he came back from World War One, but uh, he retired to the Warren and lived here with his son Barry and um, passed away here in the 80s. Here we have Victor John Williamson, Jack Williamson, or Barbwire as everybody called it. Uh, Jack uh, worked on Charlton Station before the war and uh, was married to a local girl Jesse Hayes. Uh, he is the grandfather of Claire Kesby and uh, after the war when he came back he went onto the uh, family farm at uh, Gundawira uh, where they uh, raised their family and, uh, and he became the first president of the Brewarrin Shire which he maintained for about 20 years and um, he, was, he was well noted as being barbed wire and when they first originally bought in uh, daylight saving in 1971 he protested and held out for a week and we stayed on standard time and everybody spread it around the countryside that we were living on barbed wire time. Uh, he did some fantastic work so far as uh, the Shire and the Council, uh, the uh, electricity uh, bringing the uh, uh, rural power to the area and, uh, and establishing the weir here in Brewarrina. The, uh, the weir and the weir park was called Jack Williamson Park and uh, he was uh, well noted has been a terrific townsman. Here we have Cecil Gillies. Um, Cecil uh, came to the Burrawarrina and Burke area before the war and um, served in World War II. Uh, he worked as an air craftsman repairman in Sydney and, uh, but uh, he raised his family and after the war came back here to Bewarrina where one of his daughters married a, another uh, ex-serviceman, uh, Potty Norton, in Joy. Uh, and when the, another of his daughters is still here today, Pat Hull, the, the mother of, uh, of Danny, Cri Cliff, Brett and Kylie. Uh, Cliff still lives, lives in Bewarrina and uh, Brett works on the Shire. Here we have Owen Mooney. Owen was a veteran from World War I. I don't know a lot about him, so I, I can't say a lot, but uh, he was a resident of Warren uh, after World War I and until his passing. Here we have Peter Oliver. Uh, Peter was a local chap. Uh, before World War II. He worked and lived on Millroy Station where his father had been manager. And uh, after the war, Peter got married and had a family. Uh, his, his daughter, Ivy, lives in Dubbo now, married to Richard Jeffries, the country singer. And uh, Peter ran Milroy Marino Stud and he also ran Cartland's Angus Stud with his wife, uh, Dorothy, and uh, Dorothy still lives in Dubbo.
uh, in a nursing home at the moment. But she's uh, she's well in her 90s. But, uh, but, uh, Peter moved to town, and he had a, a carrying business doing the Brewarrina uh, to Gadooga to Colgo West Colgo mail runs, employing a driver. And he also set up a Colgo Motors a garage in the situation in the in the spot where uh, the Brewarrina TAFE building is now. He also had. Oliver's service station, which was in the main street opposite the police station, which lately has been known as Wolf's service station, and it is now uh, Tommy Lucas's tyre changing spot. Here we have Brian Waring. I'm not real sure, but I think Brian was a, a uh, AIF member in World War II. Uh, he came to Brewarrina after the after World War II and took over the uh, management of Pendiana Station down the Coolabar Road where he raised his family and his son Tony and uh, he and his wife. But, uh, Tony was tragically killed in a car accident uh, when he was about 18 and uh, but, uh, Brian sold the property and moved away and then he, he came back to the district later on that uh, uh, passed away shortly afterwards. We have William Charles McDougall, uh, better known as Young Blue, because his father was William Charles McDougall as well, also known as Blue. Now, uh, William McDougall went to World War II and returned home. Uh, he resided at Albemarle Station on the Gadooga Road. And, um, raised the family there with his wife Jessie and uh, but then he um, he resided there he, he died as a reasonable young man only 56 and, uh, and uh, his wife and daughter uh, Jessie and Lillian ran the local clothing store uh, known as uh, Albemarle Froxeron Jim Hubbard. Jim was a, a very capable Aboriginal stockman. Uh, he joined in the uh, World War I at the uh, Light Horse Brigades and he was a recognised horse breaker uh, throughout the war and he returned, he originally came from about Kanawala but uh, moved down to the Wollongaringal Gadooga area as a station hand along with his wife Ruby and uh, worked in the Brewarren and Gadooga Wollongaringal area for the rest of his life up until his passing. But he was a very, uh, very well recognised, well respected Aboriginal gentleman. This is Edward Hill. He was a uh, member of the uh, First World War veterans. He uh, enlisted at Colrinderbrae and he and 20 others walked to Narrabri and caught the train to Sydney so that they could join up. Uh, he was an Aboriginal chap, uh, very well respected. Some of his family are still living here in Brewarrina today. He came to Brewarrina after the war and his family came with him. Uh, one of his daughters is Gloria Phoenix, living in Church Street, and uh, he's got a few granddaughters here as well. Here we have uh, Harry Glover, uh, Colonel Glover, World War I and World War II. Uh, members of his family still live in the area, being uh, his grandson, Gerald Glover, and wife Sue. Mr. Glover uh, returned after World War II and uh, resided at Touring Station, where the family still remain today. Here we have Walter Brown, better known as Scorchy, a brother of, of Lloyd Brown, an uncle to uh, Denny, Mark, Heather, Joss, Julie, Debbie, Kevin and Craig. And, uh, 
he was a, uh, a member of the second second pioneer battalion along with my uncle alexander george sandy and um, they went right through the war together in the uh, middle east and through new guinea in return uh, scorchy didn't marry but uh, he was well known around town as being a, a very keen fisherman and uh, that's that's about it. He worked for the uh, PMG when he came home after the army. Here we have Sergeant Pearson, another member of the uh, First World War uh, Brigade. He, uh, he worked on Quintanbone Station, I believe, but I don't know a lot about him. Here we have Bill Langbein. Bill was a member of the large Langbein family that had uh, a sawmill interest in the Bewarrina and uh, uh, Colorina areas. Uh, the, the family ran a, a sawmill at Corella and uh, Bill worked there before going into the army. After he came back from the army, he went back to work at the, uh, at the sawmill along with his brother Alton, who we'll see in a minute. Here we have Alton Langbein, better known as Snowy. Uh, Snowy went to World War II and came home. He worked at the sawmill with his uh, brother Bill and uh, brother-in-law Charlie McDougall. Uh, Snowy got married to Millie Robbins and uh, they had six children. There was uh, Sally. Mrs. Russell Bow, the mother of, uh, of Julia Lucas, who works at the hospital, and Peter Bow, who's the handyman around town, and uh, a few others. Uh, but uh, also they had uh, uh, three girls, uh, Judith, Narelle, Kathy, and another son, uh, Athol, or Scotty. They're fairly well known around here. Here we have Thomas Hart. Tommy was one of uh, the Hart families. Uh, I was speaking to one of his uh, distant descendants the other day, and she said, oh, my grandfather had three boys, Tom, Dick and Harry. This, this is Tom. Uh, he served in World War I, came home, and he uh, ran an insurance selling business in Bathurst Street. Uh, along with his wife, and uh, they had a son, young Tom, uh, but, uh, but he passed, old Tom passed away in the mid-1960s. The last entry we made was Tom Hart Sr. He was the father of Tom, Dick and Harry. This is one of his sons, Tom Jr. Uh, he served in, in the, during the war, and came home, and uh, passed away in the 1960s. He, his wife was Sadie and he had a son, Tom. Here we have Bobby Parker. Bobby Parker was a old Aboriginal chap who was very well recognised and respected throughout the Bawarana area. Uh, one of his daughters is Mrs. Dick Jeffries, or Zeta, uh, the mother of Richard, Danny, Bobby, Elsie, uh, Julie, Jeffrey, and Sam. Um, Bobby Parker was very well respected, uh, living in Bewarrina for most of his life. After the war, he ran a fruit and vegetable business, which he used to go from house to house and sell fresh fruit and vegetables out of the back of a, a Chevrolet utility. He used to provide a very good service and, and quality vegetables. Uh, after a while, he and his wife moved to Lightning uh, uh, Ridge and lived there until he passed away. Here we have John Norman, or Jack Norman as he was better known. Uh, Jack was a chap that used to work around the Brewarrina 
district, going from station to station, doing a bit of casual work. It, uh, he was uh, uh, partnered with a local lady, uh, Dulcy Frail. They had several children, and uh, he was uh, very well known and respected around the Bree area. Here we have James Edward Grant. Uh, James Grant uh, didn't live in Brewarrina as such, but his son Gordon came to Brewarrina in the early 1950s, met a local girl, married her, and they had 10 children together. And uh, James came here in later years and uh, passed away here. But uh, he was cremated and his ashes were brought back to Brewarrina and buried here. Uh, beside his son Gordon and his daughter-in-law May and uh, beside his grandson Jimmy. Yeah, he has been, he has survived here in Bewarren and still living today is Jack O'Grant and Leah as his grandchildren. Here we have Peter Robert Gordon Taylor. Peter Taylor uh, came to Bewarren in the mid-1950s with his wife Kate and sons Michael and John. Uh, he set up a uh, stock and station agency which he bought in the main street under the Barwon Hotel. Uh, he operated it for a number of years and then he uh, closed the building down and went working for others. Uh, he worked at Wright Heaton's for a while. He uh, worked for the Nemoy County Council for a while. Uh, he did a bit of bar work at the RSL Club and he picked up a, a uh, secretaryship at the Golf Club and a couple of other uh, honorary positions like that. But, uh, but he, he was a, a good old bloke, old Pete. And I went to school with his son Michael. Uh, when uh, when we were all called up to go to Vietnam for the Vietnam War, Michael uh, was uh, was called up, and uh, he went and served his time in, in Vietnam. And met a nice girl, Sandy, and came home, uh, got a position over on the Central Coast as a commercial traveller, and uh, worked from there. But uh, Michael's wife, Sandy, passed away with cancer at Christmas time this year. Here we have Keith Single. Uh, Keith Single came from Nengen uh, in mid 1950s. Uh, he and a partner, Les Senior, operated a, uh, a butcher shop in Wilson Street, which is now known as South Bree Butchery. It was Single and Senior's butchery at that stage. And the ad that was in the papers was We don't keep good meat, we sell it. Keith operated the butcher shop for several years before selling it on and semi-retiring. Then he bought the uh, orchard up on the river where Craig Brown is currently residing. And uh, uh, Keith uh, went into retirement after that and, uh, and passed away here in Warren. His wife and stepdaughter uh, moved to Inverell and uh, his wife passed away up there, Tess, and uh, they brought her ashes back and she is interred here with him too. Here we have Vivian Slacksmith's mother, uh, Judith Cameron, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Cameron was a member of the ladies She was very active uh, and uh, played a, a, a huge role in women's forces and women's uh, uh, role during World War II and came home where she married Donald Cameron and, uh, and, uh, and Vivian. Uh, she was a, a well-known member of the Hayes family which owned Cedars and uh, 
she was one of uh, Joe Hayes' daughters, and um, she was a very well loved, very well known, very well respected lady. Here we have uh, Colin Crowley. Uh, Colin was a member of the large Crowley family that were owners of Polaroid Station up on the Walgett Road. Uh, there was eight or nine members of the family. Uh, Colin and his brother Charles, um, Charlie Crowley, they both went away to World War I. Uh, Charlie came back and went on to work at Polaroid uh, for several years. Left in the uh, mid-1960s to live with his sister in Sydney. Uh, Colin uh, returned to work on the family farm for a few years and passed away at a young age, uh, about 10 years after the war had finished. Here we have Bob Golden. Uh, Bob came to Warren as a young chap with his parents when his father used to be the station master at the Brewerina Railway Station and uh, Bob worked around and uh, went away to the war and came back. He married um, Kath Surrey and uh, they had a family of uh, Gloria, David, Robert uh, and Trish and uh, Bob worked for the uh, uh, Electricity Commission as a uh, well, as, as an electrician and a uh, a handyman with the uh, uh, Sturt County Council and then the uh, Nemo Valley County Council and before he, he moved to Tamworth in semi-retirement and uh, after he passed away they brought his ashes home to have him buried here with his wife. I'm here at the headstone of Raymond Kelly. Uh, Raymond was a First World War soldier. Uh, I don't know a lot about him but he, his uh, wife Marnie is buried here beside him and they had a, a few children. Uh, one of their grandchildren, Ron Kelly, went to school with me in Brewarana uh, in the 1950s, early 1960s. Well, here in front of this slab, which has been prepared by the uh, Monument of Masons, to have the headstone fitted on one side for Charles Raymond Willoughby, a veteran of World War II. He was also a prisoner of war in Germany uh, for a great deal of the war. Uh, when he returned home to Brewarna after 1946, he, uh, he married a local girl, Mary Mannix. She became Mary Willoughby. Now, Mary only passed away three or four months ago. And uh, this slab has been prepared for her headstone to go down beside the one for Ray. Uh, Mary uh, was one of the Mannix, Mannix family and uh, with her passing it only leaves one member of the seven children of the Mannixes still surviving and that is Mrs. Willa Haggerty in Dubbo, the mother of David Haggerty and Sue Glover. Uh, thank you for being with us this afternoon. I hope you have enjoyed uh, what we have done for the Brewerina Historical Society at the Brewerina Cemetery. And thank you for being with us.